Hello there! Welcome back to the Photography Made Simple podcast. With me, your host Audrianne. I'm the founder of Live Snap Love, a photography education resource that aims to give you the tools and knowledge you need to capture the beauty of your days through photography. Whether that be documenting your daily family life, recording your travels, or just seeing the beauty in the smaller details in your back garden, my goal is to make learning photography simple and fun so that you can start to take photos you love quickly. Now today we are going to be talking about going on vacation because if you're heading out on holiday or vacation or you're going traveling this year, then you might be wondering what photography equipment to take with you and what you can get away with leaving behind. I know we all want to take pretty much everything with us because Each bit of our photography kit, whether that be our lenses or a reflector or our flash unit, each of those things serve a purpose and we want to have them available should we need it. But there's usually limited space available, so there has to be that balance between having the perfect lens for a certain shot or a reflector that you would love to be able to help you bounce light or whatever else you may want and what you can actually reasonably fit into your camera bag and take with you particularly if you are going on a plane so you've got really limited space. So here on the podcast today, I'm going to be sharing with you the seven photography items I pretty much always take with me when traveling. Now, the list might vary a bit depending on where I'm going and what I intend to be doing, but it's a really good basis to start out with. And many of them will be the same regardless of whether I'm on a city break or heading out to the hills in the backyard of Scotland. So let's get started with the thing that I would always, always take with me, and I recommend you do too, and that is at least one spare memory card. So I always go with at least two, usually three memory cards. I want to make sure that I have enough space on my memory cards that I don't have to sit there thinking, oh, I have to delete some photos from my memory card before I can start shooting again. So I have a good four, I think, memory cards in total. I used to have more than that, but my new camera doesn't take uh, CF cards. And I just like to take pretty much all of them with me because they're so light. They're so easy to throw into your camera bag. They don't take up any space or any weight. And then that way I know that I have enough space for everything that I want to capture. And I just make sure before I go that I've uploaded all the photos from the memory cards. They're clear, nothing is on them so that I am ready to go. And I know that I can just take a card pop that into my camera and start shooting. Because there's nothing worse than you go put your card in your camera and then you realize there's photos on there and you think, did I upload those already or did I not? And you end up keeping them just in case and you end up with not having any space that you thought you had. So the first thing I do take with me is that spare memory card. So take as many as you have unless you've got ridiculous amounts of memory cards, but, you know, at least two memory cards, you know, more than that if you have it. So between two four memory cards, I would recommend that you take with me. So that's something I take with me regardless of where I'm going, whether that be to the city or to the beach or to the hills. I know that I've got enough space to capture everything I want to, and I don't have to censor myself with how many photos I'm taking or start to delete some from the memory card. The second thing I always take with me is a spare battery and a battery charger. So if I'm just going away for a couple of days, I might just take only the spare battery and leave the charger at home because it can be a little bit bulky. I can fit a lens into the same space as my battery charger will fit into. So I only take that with me if I'm going away for more than a couple of days. But generally for longer vacations, anywhere that I'm going to be away for more than a couple of days, I do take the battery charger with me. I have noticed since I changed to the mirrorless camera 
and I'm not sure if this is true of all mirrorless cameras or if it's just my one, but the battery goes down so much quicker. Uh, so I'm finding that I need to change batteries much more often. So depending on how long your battery lasts, you will want to take that battery charger with you as well. But again, by having two, it means I can make sure that I've always got a fully charged one in my camera bag. And if I've exhausted it during the day because I've been shooting all day, I just pop that on to charge and then I've got one ready to go in my camera bag the next day and I don't need to worry about the fact that I might forget to put it on charge when I get back, which I often do. You're maybe not thinking about it, you're thinking of other things and you forget. So having that spare battery, again, doesn't take up much room, it's not heavy, so it's really easy to slip into your bag. And again, I always take that with me. And I think now that I have my camera that doesn't seem to take as many photos before I need to charge the battery, I think I'll always take my battery charger with me as well. Moving on now to the third thing, and again, this always comes with me regardless of where I'm going, and that is a backpack. Because I do have a sort of purse camera bag, but it's really not as comfortable for waiting for long periods of time. It looks pretty, but it kind of sits across body and you end up like with one sore shoulder because all the weight's going on to that. And depending on how much stuff I'm taking with me on any particular day, uh, I want to be comfortable. Uh, so I bought myself um, a low pro, I think that's how you pronounce it, L-O-W-E-P-R-O backpack. I have to say it's not my most favorite backpack, but I don't have another one. Um, and I keep meaning to kind of check out other ones. It's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's really sturdy. It's got little pockets for everything. It's got pockets for your memory cards. It's got a little bag that comes with it. And you've got little sections where you can put in your chargers. And you've got a bit down the back where you can put your laptop into or your iPad or something like that. So it's from that point of view, it is great. The only thing I don't like about it is how it opens. I feel I have to take the backpack off to get my camera out. Um, and I don't love that. I'd love something that you could kind of just more easily reach into and take out. It just opens from the side. And so even if I get my husband to open it while it's still on my back, I'm scared that the stuff's going to fall out uh, just by the way that it opens. So I'm I've been looking for something different. What I do love about it is that, as I say, it's really sturdy. It has places for everything. You can pack quite a lot of stuff into one small bag. And the best bit about it is I bought it in plain functional black, which means that I give it to my husband to wear most of the time. And that means it's easier for me to get in and out of the uh, bag and take out whatever I need with him still wearing it. And obviously it leaves my hands free for shooting. So, you know, that's just one side. So we just call him Pack Horse Daddy because he ends up with the backpack and everything else all packed in there. So, uh, but that always comes with me rather than any kind of cute uh, purse type, handbag type uh, camera bag that I have just to make sure. I do actually have another one, which I really love. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it now and I can't. It will come back to me in a minute. But it only holds my camera. It holds a camera with a lens and that's it. And it's got a little pouch on the front where you can slip in a spare battery and a spare memory card and some money and your, you know, your phone. But that's it. There's nothing else. And I do sometimes take that one with me, um, as well as my backpack. So I use my backpack to keep everything in when I'm traveling. So that's all the storage. And then I take this, uh, oh, I nearly had Pretty Boy. It's a Pretty Boy uh, camera bag and it just sits cross body. But again, it's really nice and padded. 
and I can just fit my camera and my lens into it and a couple of other bits and bobs and that's it. And sometimes that's really handy when you don't want to take a lot of stuff with you because you've maybe got a lot of other things coming with you. Maybe you're going to the beach and you've got things like towels and food and a picnic and you don't want to take lots of photography equipment as well. I can just throw a camera into that and I'm good to go. I used to also have one of these things um, and I don't know what happened to it, <laughs> but you, you, it was like a little carry pouch just for your camera and you could throw it into any camera bag. Uh, sorry, not into any camera bag, into any bag. This thing just was like a padded pouch for your camera and lens. And then you would just take that and put it into any normal bag. So, uh, but I prefer to take just a dedicated camera bag, but that is another option as well. Okay, so, so far I've got three or four memory cards. I have two batteries plus my battery charger usually, and I have my backpack. One more thing I will say about the backpack is to make sure that you take wet weather protection with you. Any camera bag worth its salt will come with a little bag, uh, just like a waterproof cover that you can put over the top, which will make sure that all your photography gear is protected should you find yourself in an unexpected downpour. So have that with you as well. Okay, so moving on now, and we're going to get into lenses. And I think lenses is one of the things I find most challenging to decide what to pack and what to leave behind. And that's mainly because I shoot with prime lenses. So in case you don't know, a prime lens is a lens that only has one focal length. So if you want to move further or, or sorry, you want to zoom in and get closer or get further back to fit more in the frame, you have to physically move yourself. You have to move your feet to get closer or further back. And each lens in my lens arsenal does a different thing. It each serves a different purpose. It is a perfect lens for one or two things. And I need another lens to help me do something else. So for example, my 35 millimeter is a great all rounder. It is a fantastic walkabout lens. I can use it for many things, but I wouldn't use it for portraits. Um, it's not also ideal if I want to take any longer range type photos. So I do need to be careful with what I pack. So the one lens that pretty much always comes with me, and it's actually the only zoom lens that I own, and that is my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Now, the reason this lens has found its way into my camera bag for pretty much anywhere that we go is that you can use this for quite a lot of walk around photography. And by that, I mean, I can use that for shooting indoors. I could use that for street photography. I could use that when we go to the beach. I can use that if we go for a walk. Um, we're going up the hills or, uh, you know, to a remote part of I love traveling in my home country, which is Scotland. And uh, there's lots of really remote locations there that there's really not much going on, but it's such beautiful vistas. You want to have the whole, you know, as much into the scene. So I find my 16 to 35 really allows me to take uh, images in multiple locations. So indoors, in a restaurant, you know, street photography while walking around uh as I say, landscape style photos, environmental portraits where I want photos of my subject, but lots of the surroundings as well. So it's a really good multi-purpose lens. Before I had that, I would always take my 35 millimeter lens. And it is actually a little bit of a fight between them both because I love my Sigma 35 millimeter art lens. It's probably... I wouldn't like to go. I don't play favorites with my lens, but it's up there. And I always feel a little bit sad if I have to leave it. But the 16 to 35 just has that little bit of an edge because I can go to 16 millimeter. That's the only reason. But I traveled for years before I got that lens. I bought it, the 16 to 35 millimeter. I got it second hand. Um, it's not even the latest one. Uh, but I just got that specifically for that purpose. I just, a couple of times when I was away and I had the 35 millimeter lens, 
I just wanted something that little bit wider. So I do see though, and I'd love it, but I just can't justify spending any more money on lenses. I did notice that Sigma had come out with, I think it was a 24 to 35 millimeter f1.8 I think it's f1.8 lens oh, and I think that would be amazing and I'd love to have it um, maybe one of these days but back to the purpose of this podcast which is what lenses to take with you when traveling or on vacation so the 16 to 35 millimeter or the 35 millimeter lens pretty much always makes its way into my camera bag because of that multi-purpose capability. I always tend to take at least one other lens with me. Now, I try to keep it to two lenses. So that's my 16 to 35 plus one other lens. And at this point, it really depends on where I'm going and what I intend to be doing. So if I'm going to be taking any kind of portraits when I'm away, then I'll probably put my 85 millimeter into my camera bag. Again, it's quite small. It's quite lightweight. Doesn't take too much room. It's fantastic for portraits. But if I'm going to be doing portraits and I maybe feel that I want to have something that will allow me to take uh, photos from further back, for example, I may be interested in doing some wildlife there as well, then I tend to put in maybe my 135, which is, or even my 200, which is great for portraits as well. And I can uh, use that for that type of photos as well if I want to kind of see photos for wildlife. So that's something else that I will take with me. The other one that I might consider taking, and again, this all depends on where I'm going and what I intend to be doing at the time, is my macro lens. Again, that doubles as a fantastic uh, portrait lens, allows me to take macro, and it's slightly longer in length, which again, can be useful for wildlife photography. So this does tend to decide on where I'm going. If I'm going on a city break, I won't take that longer length lens. because it's just not worth it for for where we're going. But again, if I'm going up the hills, I'm going, you know, out in Scotland uh, countryside, then I do tend to take one of those longer length lenses with me. So it really all depends on what we're doing on that particular vacation. So the 65 to 35 is always uh, pretty much in my camera bag and I will take one other lens depending on what I'm going to be doing. And if I'm really not sure, then I just tend to throw in a 50 millimeter. And if I have enough room, if we're driving to wherever we're going, I'll probably throw in a 50 millimeter as well. I'll make it three lenses. So 50 millimeter, great all rounder. You can do portraits, you can do street photography with it. You can do, it might not be the perfect lens for any of those things, but it's a great all rounder. And if you are only wanting to take one lens with you, then the, and you want to be able to take portraits and straight and 50 millimeter can be fantastic. It will do all things. Uh, maybe not the best lens for each one or the perfect lens for the job, but it will give you great options for all types of photography. Okay, so moving on now, we have my spare memory cards, my spare battery, my battery charger. I've got my back backpack backpack with my wet weather protection and I have a 16 to 35 millimeter lens and at least one other lens depending on where I'm going. There's a couple of other things that always make it into my backpack. The first is my lens pen and if you haven't heard of this, this is a little, it looks like a really thick pen, more like a highlighter pen than a pen, but one end has a little brush on it and the other hand end has a little sort of microfiber pen end. It's hard to describe. It's like a flat end with a little bit of a microfiber cloth on it. Tiny. But you use the brush to brush off any debris on your lens and then you use the other side that has that little microfiber head and you can use that to clean your lens. So I find if I've been maybe at the beach or something like that, you can end up with little sand particles around your lens. I want to get them off of there as quickly as possible so I don't scratch my lens. So that little brush just allows me to do that and then I can clean away any smudges with the lens pen. So I don't take a full lens cleaning kit with me. My lens pen just, again, because it is the size of a pen, maybe just a really thick lens, 
that's perfect. It can just throw in my camera bag. Again, super light and it has that dual function if I'm able to brush things away and clean away any smudges as well. So that always makes it in. And my final thing, technically not a bit of photography equipment, but it's phone apps. So I always have my phone with me. My Uh, I use an iPhone. My phone is fantastic for taking photos in its own right. So there are times when we are, you know, I want to go really low. Uh, You know, I don't want to take a backpack and everything with me. I will sometimes just shoot with my phone. I find it really challenging just to shoot with an iPhone. And if you understand light and composition, you can get fantastic photos just with your phone camera. So uh, you know, sometimes I prefer my camera. Obviously, that's why I got one. Um, it gives me more choices, more options. I can get more creative with it. Um, I just gives me higher quality photos. I just prefer it all round. But there are times when your phone camera is just, it's, it's so handy. It's great to have with you. And you can still practice photography with a phone camera. If you're looking at the direction of the light, you're telling a story, you're wondering how to compose your subject. Uh, you can get apps as well that allow you to, you know, use different settings, decide where their exposure is going to be and so on. Then you can uh, take fantastic photos with your phone as well. But even if I'm not taking photos with it, I like to have it with me for having a couple of apps. So I love to have the weather app so I can see what it's going to be like that day. Do I need to take uh, X amount of things with me? And I also like it for the, I have a calculator for sunrise and sunset. And again, that can be really handy, especially when you're in a new location. You don't know where the sun's going to be at that time of day. You want to kind of figure that out before you get there. Then that app is really useful for that as well. So I have a couple of apps actually that I use for photography. I'll maybe do a podcast on that actually, maybe deserves one on its own right, but I definitely have my phone is with me in my backpack and I consider that a piece of my photography equipment because it helps me with the apps that are on there and also I can use that as a backup to my camera in a pinch at those times when I really just have to be extremely lightweight with everything that I am taking with me on a particular outing. So there you have it, that's the seven things that I take with me on Uh, vacation or when I'm traveling, I'm on holiday. I have my spare memory cards, my battery, my battery charger, my backpack, a couple of lenses, my lens pen and my phone with my little phone apps already snugly on there. Now, the things I don't ever take with me or very, very rarely is a tripod. I don't try, I, I purposefully like uh, low equipment photography. I don't like having to take lots of things with me. So I don't use a tripod. It's just heavy and it's cumbersome. So I do have one and I use it very occasionally. Um, more likely than not, I'm going to find a way that I can steady my camera without taking out the tripod. I am a lazy photographer, but, uh, so I don't ever take that with me. I, don't generally take my flash with me. It's just generally something I don't feel that I need just because of what I'm doing. The only time that might change is if I was going to, let's say I was traveling and I was going on a city break to go to someone's birthday night out and I'm taking photos at it and I'm taking photos of the people there and I want it to be a bit higher quality. Then I'll to pack my flash with me for that. So I have a speed light. I use the Canon 430EX uh, version 2. There's a newer version out. I just have the older version. Don't use my flash that often, but I like to have it. Um, so sometimes I will, t- again, depending on where I'm going, I will take that with me. A lot of it also depends on just how much room I have. You know, I don't want to take unnecessary stuff, but if I have room to slip my flash in there without it, you know, compromising anything else, then I might do that as well. So that's it. That's everything that I take with me. Oh, one more thing that I forgot. Um, I tend not to take this with me, 
but I know a lot of people who will take an external hard drive with them. Now, the purpose of taking your external hard drive with you is that you can upload the photos off your memory card and have them safely stored on your external hard drive. This means you've still got two copies of your photos. Should anything happen to your memory card, it gets corrupted or your hard drive gets corrupted or anything along those lines, you still have two copies until you can back everything up and just make sure everything's good to go. So I don't do that. I tend not to, but you can do that. And also if you have, I do take my laptop with me and I can upload photos to the cloud. I use Lightroom. Well, actually, I have the photography plan from Adobe. And that means I get Lightroom Classic, which I use mainly. I have Photoshop for the times when I need the advanced editing tools that Photoshop give me. And it also gives you access to Lightroom, which is the cloud-based version of Lightroom. Now, if you are a very low volume shooter, that might be all you need. For most photographers, you'll want Lightroom Classic. And then you can use Lightroom, the cloud version, on the go. That's what it's there for. You can upload your photos to the cloud when you're on the go. And then when you come back, you download them, get them onto your hard drive, and then you can clear the space in the cl- in the cloud. We don't want to keep paying Adobe more money each month for storage, we can just download them, get them into our main system that we use with Lightroom Classic and clear them that way. But Lightroom, the cloud version can be useful on the go for that as well. Again, it's not something I tend to do, but if there was something particularly important, yeah, I'd probably do that. Okay, so there we have it. I hope that you found this useful and helpful and if you are going away this year whether you're going to the beach or to the hills or to a city break I hope you have a fantastic holiday and you take lots of wonderful photos and don't forget that you can share them with me both on Facebook and Instagram on Facebook we have a dedicated post usually every Thursday unless I forget where you can share your photos and if you just share them on Instagram with the hashtag live snap love so hashtag live snap love on Instagram we can find you there and we can get to see all of your fabulous photos so that's it for me for this week and I will see you again soon bye for now